Well, how do there, chums? It is I, Captain of the Steves, and today, chums, for you guys in the viewerverse, I'm going to be talking a little bit about No Man's Sky and everything that's happened over the last couple of days where it comes to the update that's hit No Man's Sky and the fact there are no patch notes and it hasn't rolled out to Xbox. We're going to get into all of that, people, in today's episode. So let's jump on over to the old Tinterwebs where I'll start on off. So, Quirkabox... Uh, hopefully that's how you pronounce the name, Quirkbox, hit me up with this. A mega update was supposed to land at the beginning of 2023. Evidenced by Sean Murray, writing on the PlayStation blog. The four-part narrative was supposed to play out in 2023. This confirms the break from format of the four seasonal expeditions per year, as explained by Captain Steve. So yes, I've done quite a few videos on this, and I hadn't seen this PlayStation blog. So yeah, and it's you know, across the year. And here's the actual source. Now I've opened that inside of another tab just to make sure there's no adverts or sound playing or whatever. You know what it's like now, scouring the internet. Anyway, scrolling down on here. So, hello, today we're very excited to bring to you our next seasonal update. And this was actually by Sean of the Murrays, founder of Hello Games. A limited time expedition called Singularity. This is a big one. Part expedition and part update with a ton of content, story, gameplay and some of our most exciting rewards. Now they've also done that with Fractal. They gave us the Utopia update along with a couple of bits and bobs inside of game. And that was in February. I've got that in a tab up here. We'll get to that later because I think the patch notes when they drop today are going to look very much like the Singularity and very much like the Fractal and Utopia sort of patch page is what I'm thinking people. A ship, a, a new visor or a new wingsuit, whatever. The last few months have been very busy for No Man's Sky. We opened up the year with Fractal, bringing PSVR 2 support and much more. Six weeks later, we launched Interceptor, which brought the first hints of a broader narrative playing out in the No Man's Sky universe. This is part of the arc and the ARG and all that sort of stuff. You had Interceptor, Singularity, and then Echoes. And is this, what we're seeing now, is Omega Part 4? Because, you know, it could be the end, and we all know Omega means the end. We also know it means great. Okay, let's scroll on down. Singularity delivers a story and challenge, which is chapter two of the four-part narrative, which will play out across the year. So technically, it should have ended in 2023. Now, towards the tail end of 2023, around October time, there was a lot of speculation on my part and other content creators saying that hopefully we'll be seeing things come into iteration and the reason why we thought it was is because some content creators were hit on up with an opportunity of a sponsored video with hello games then backing them but then that got redacted and recanted and vanished into the ether but they did have something planned it was going to happen then didn't very odd. It could be because they added in that new terminal that they wanted people to test and thought it would be better to do it in the new year who knows? It's not like that we get comms regularly from Hello of the Games. Singularity starts with players across the systems on the same planet as they set out to investigate a curious robot, robot heads that have been delivering cryptic clues across the galaxy. And we've still got this guy sitting up on the old space anomaly if you build him. And at the moment, it's got no rhyme or reason. It doesn't really do much apart from speak some gibberish. I honestly thought we were going to get new missions added in from this guy. And I still think that's on the cards. Or else it looks awesome, but you're never going to go up and see it ever again. Um, it, it, it would be totally shallow if they didn't do something with that. Okay, we want to keep the mystery, but this is a story about AI corruption. Robotic uprising and strong hints of what's to come in No Man's Sky. And a lot of speculation that I've been putting out there and others, uh, content creators or on Reddit or wherever you look for your speculation, has all been around this robotic corruption, the Void Mother, the whole arc, the whole ARG that's being pushed through this narrative. Throughout the five week long expedition, the whole community will be working with Nada and Polo in the Space Anomaly and can try to breathe new life into the galaxy and work together for some exciting rewards. And I must admit, the rewards have been fairly exciting and we've got a whole new race there. So last year, when, it, when you think about it and what actually got delivered last year, last year it did deliver quite large things into the game when it comes to narrative, but it hasn't been tied off. There is no end loop and it does feel that it got pushed into this year. And it did feel that we was going to get everything delivered in February, a slightly bigger update, because it seemed to be that it was moving over. 
but it's moved over, but not in the big way that we thought it would get delivered, and we'll get to that in a moment. The expedition concludes with the players having to make a choice, which will have far-reaching consequences. We made a choice between an Antelid, an Atlantid head or an Atlas head, but there hasn't been that big choice that's had far-reaching consequences. Whether I walk out of the freaking Nexus wearing one head or another makes no difference to anyone. No, not even me, really. It's a cosmetic. On top of all this, there have even more strange clues to decipher that hint at a deeper story to come. That's what we're waiting for. That's what we thought would come in 2020. Three. But it hasn't. It hasn't actually come over as yet. As of all No Man's Sky expeditions, Singularity comes with a large number of wards and souvenirs which can be redeemed across all saves, including our first new fully customizable set in years for your main character, an impressive robot suit. So they mention the impressive robot suit here. So when they say about the far-reaching consequences, that can't be it because they just gave the game away there. So it must be something else. But what is that something else, people? Now, it hasn't appeared in 2023. It was supposed to, and that's Sean Murray's own words. So that's why we've set all this sort of speculation, because we had a sort of play box to set it in, you know? I mean, this isn't the only sort of article out there from the Sean of the Murrays that sort of laid this out. He actually put it on Twitter that it was going to be a four-part arc. And he said that 2023 was going to be a big year. Now 2024 is going to be a big year. I honestly think they're trying to pack a lot into 2024, but I think they're going to deliver it in parts. And as we go through all these tabs, you'll see my reason as to why I think that is. Okay, so I did mention that I think that the patch notes for Omega are going to be very much like Fractal. Now, the Fractal update, as soon as you scroll down, the first thing you see is about, you know, the, the general quality of life and what's going on with Fractal. But then straight after that, it hits up Utopia Expedition. I kind of think that we're going to see the same thing happen. We're going to have the title board, then a little bit of narrative to say whether it is or isn't the last part of the four-part arc. If it doesn't say that it's part of the, the um, four-part arc and the last part of the ARG, then I'm still fairly excited for the rest of the year. If it says this is the end of the four-part arc, and this is now the Void Mother in the iteration, and that's how you're going to experience the Void Mother through the actual expedition, the Omega expedition. Although there is some lore there, it is just text. You don't get to see the Void Mother, you don't go into the Void or anything like that. I would be... I would feel that they've missed a massive opportunity there to put in their own sort of universe. A universe that perhaps they could restrict base building, a universe that they could make a little bit more procedurally generated I mean, we've got 256 galaxies. They only have to look for the galaxy that has the least amount of bases built in it and say, right, we're going to cordon this one off. We're going to reset this one galaxy and take that for ourselves. And we're going to stick it there as being the void or the realm of glass or both even. And we're going to make it different to all the other galaxies. It's like a sub galaxy, a galaxy that hasn't got base build and hasn't got any other complexities a galaxy for Hello Games to do loads of wondrous stuff in and call it the Void or the Realm of Glass, a previous iteration before the anomalies, us, came in and started harvesting planets and building all over them. And it makes so much sense. I really do hope, fingers crossed, that that sort of thing happens, but, you know, I, I've got no control over that. No way. But anyway, it, it jumps straight into Utopia Expedition. I'm fairly sure that when we get the patch notes later today, it's going to jump straight into the Mega Rope Expedition because that is the biggest part of this whole freaking update that's coming out. Apart, Well, there's also ownership of Sentinel sort of dreadnoughts. The only thing is, on my legacy save, I don't know whether I want to give up my freighter. You know, the freighter I've got is not a Sentinel Dreadnought. It's not a Sentinel Destroyer class ship. What I've got is one with a little turny wheel at the end that looks a little bit like this frigate that you can see here. It's like a bigger version of that, my freighter. Just because I wanted to be different from everybody. But I know that within like the first two months of this update being out, everybody's going to have Sentinel S-Class Dreadnoughts. And all the videos that we see online are all going to be about how to get your Sentinel S-Class Dreadnought. I mean, I'm going to even make a video on how you can get your Sentinel Dreadnought. But I'm probably not going to bother. I'm probably going to keep to mine because I feel that it's more unique. Plus also, I like flying through that little turny wheel at the front. Yeah, I know. It's a bit weird. But yeah, I like doing that. Anyways... 
I, this is the sort of patch notes that I think we're going to have. And I honestly think something is going to happen with the Wonders catalogue. I'll jump into gaming a bit and I'll tell you why I think Wonders are going to be a bigger thing going forwards throughout this year. I honestly think a lot is going to hinge around the Wonders catalogue inside of No Man's Sky. But we'll get on to that when I jump over into game. Once I've got through all these tabs at the top here. But yeah. I think I think that's going to be a major part of upcoming narratives. It's like inside of this one, we got the Utopia speeder ship. Inside of Omega, we're going to get the um, runner ship, this new racing type ship covered in decals, which again, we'll touch on the decals once I jump over into game a little bit later on. Yes, we're probably going to see some more fidelity and more sort of optimizations and more improvements across all the other platforms that are still playing catch up with next gen and PC, etc. Like on Switch and on VR platforms. And look, we've got a helmet. We're going to get another faceplate. We've got a wingsuit. We're going to get another wingsuit. It seems to be a very much sort of, well, this seems to be what's happening in February is now. You know, we're going to get singularity. We're going to get the factual type update. We had living ship once. We had companions. It's kind of what we got given inside of Omega is no different to what we get in a February. It's about a February sized update and which I said, you know, there is every chance that it could be as simple as what we saw inside of the expedition inside of experimental branch that comes over into all the other platforms. I did actually say that and that's why I said set your expectations there at what you've seen inside of, you know, the experimental branch. Anything else that you get on top of that is a bonus. So the things that are a bonus are these on-side planet-side missions, which, yeah, it's new ways to run missions. I did say maybe we might get new ways to run missions. We have got new ways to run missions, but they do feel a little bit sort of, although that they take elements from the planet and put them in and say, oh yeah, this planet's got high storms. I'm fairly sure we're going to see very repetitive missions being offered up to us like destroy some sentinels or fend off some sentinels or do this with x y and z i don't think it's going to be massively deep and i don't think they're going to be multiplayer oriented i mean i haven't come across them myself i've seen a couple of screenshots that people have shared of missions that they've come across so you know there is that but anyway i think that the omega patch notes are going to read very similar to the, the fractal patch notes is what I'm saying, people, from this tab. Now, on the next tab, people, is my own channel page. And the only reason I've got this up is to show you a couple of dates. So I started talking about, you know, station overrides and the things they might do. We're going back 2021, mate. Freaking 2021 is when we got teased with station overrides and what the station overrides may do. And we've been speculating for the last three freaking years what these station overrides may do. But I have got a video a little bit further up where I talk about stations maybe getting larger. And um, yeah, I've got it open in another tab here. I just want to play you the first like couple of minutes of this to talk about why freighters got bigger. And also in this video, I do talk about bigger station, station speculation. If you want to see this full video, I'll put a link just up there, people, that you can go and hit up and watch this in its entirety. I'm just going to play you the first bit where I'm talking about why freighters are getting bigger. And the whole reason why I think stations were going to get bigger, just to give you a little bit of a, a, a summary, is we see ships flying through the ceiling. If you just stand in a space station and watch the entrance and watch the ships fly in, they fly in through the ceiling. They don't fly in through the mouth. So for me, it felt like the mouth of the actual stations was going to get a lot bigger. And not only that, these new explorers, which they changed up two years ago, two years ago, have got bigger wings. They're a lot higher than they. Yeah, they just wouldn't clip right with the mezzanines at the sides of the stations. And also inside of um, the expeditions, when you go to visit the station, you see people getting stuck in the mouth of the station because there's just not enough landing pads in there. Yeah, this is, yeah. so anyway, I thought that we were going to do a massive station overhaul two years ago. And I think there's evidence of that by the ship pathing. Just watch the ships. And they've been like that for two years. And I picked up on this two years ago. Honestly, think Hello Games started working on new interiors of the stations two years ago. Is what I think, people. Anyway, I'll just play you the beginning part of this one. 
Well, howdy diddly dandy there, chums. It is I, Captain Stephen X. And today, chums, yes, I'm in my expedition save. The astute have noticed I look a little different. Heck, yes, I do. But yes, it's to demonstrate something. Don't you worry, people out there in viewer world. I will be right back with you in my normal look in a bit. Heck, yes, but come a little closer, because I want to share with you an idea that, yes, stations, freighters might be getting a little bit bigger. And I'm thinking this mainly because the Explorer ships have got a little bit bigger. I mean, look at that doorway there. Yeah, it's tiny. <laughs> How the heck did either of those two ships fit through said doorway? Now, we had this issue with the Explorer ships, you know, the Y-Wings, and they made our freighters bigger in previous iteration. I mean, they didn't make those doors bigger. But yeah, it doesn't really make sense. Nothing really ever makes sense, but I'm going to buy this ship off of this Corvax guy just to prove a couple of points. Yes, I'll have your ship. Thank you very much, because I'm going to go... Then I fly it into the station and I park it right next to the mezzanines and the wings clip through the mezzanines basically. And they also show that it doesn't fit through the freaking doors of the freighter. Now we all know that the doors, in, well the actual freighter interior did get an overhaul not so long after this video. You can see how sort of shallow these station, these uh, freighters are at this point. You know, the ceiling height to the floor. They're a lot higher now. We've got the yellow cranes in there. They look a lot better. We had the overhaul to the lower cargo areas of our freighters time ago and I honestly think that the update and all the speculation in this video was bang on point with the actual stations getting an overhaul and I think Hello Games started on that overhaul like I say two years ago. Anyway jumping over onto the old Twitterverse people have been asking when when is the expedition going to actually roll out? When are we going to see the patch notes? When are we going to see it come over to Xbox? Well, at least that bomber boy has probably answered one of those questions. So when is the expedition going to start? Expedition 12 starts at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on February the 15th, 2024. And he's found that from this index file here. You can see the start time, Tuesday, February, and, and all those sort of stuff down here. You can see where he's actually gathered that information from expedition 25 i think i have to click this to make it larger so i think it's down here yeah february 13th here we go expedition 25 start time thursday february 15th 2024 9 a.m local time and that's his local time i take it now my local time i'm in the uk so i just jumped over to google i put in 9 a.m eastern standard time to uk and it tells me it's going to start at 2 p.m today people i will be doing a video on the actual patch notes let's see if i'm right let's see if they're a complete mirror of the fractal update in the way that they're laid out that the, the actual expedition is pretty much top of the list and it is pretty much all focused around the cosmetics that we're getting inside of this update right xbox Still not on sale. And funny enough, the sales have actually taken place on PlayStation, they've taken place on PC and Steam, and they have now rolled out to Nintendo Switch. So those two platforms were the first to get the update. Hmm, funny that. Now, if I was Sean of the Murrays, and I planned for it to go on sale on all platforms on the same date, and I sent off my requests to put it on sale on the same date, across every platform because that's what I imagine he's done and it's just taken Microsoft time and a half to freaking reflect that change on their website I'd be a little bit peed off with Microsoft in that regard or, or Xbox or whoever makes those decisions over there and I think I would have been inclined to roll out the updates on the platforms that had adopted the sales because you know Hello Games is trying to capitalise on the game being half price at the time that coincides with an update rolling out. You've got to put your mindset into the mindsets of them. They're trying to run a business. And No Man's Sky, you know, everybody that's bought No Man's Sky so far are the people that want No Man's Sky. It's the people that see that No Man's Sky is getting these new updates all the time that are going to jump in and say, I might get it. I'm going to give it a go. And that audience is a lot smaller than the audience that's already bought it. And that's a very, it's a, it's a, it's a shrinking market as well. It's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So Hello Games have to try harder and harder and harder to get that new purchase because Everybody that wants it's got it. So it's very difficult for them to, you know, throw out some fresh bait and go, ah, gotcha. You know? And then when one platform doesn't follow suit, 
it's almost like, for fudge sake, Microsoft's at it again. They're not letting me update the freaking, not putting my sale live on time. Well, you know what? Let's just roll out the, let's roll out the updates on um, Switch. I mean, uh, you know, on, on PlayStation and on Steam because they have adopted the sales. We can capitalize there. We can get people to start jumping in and purchasing it. But, you know, we're just going to hold back the expedition until Xbox reflects the changes. But if they don't, sod them, you know. That's kind of how I would feel if I was if business hat on business hat business hat. You know, I know Hello Games loves this community, but they must get frustrated with the developers, with the actual platform owners. They must get frustrated with them from a business standpoint. And they can't just sort of say, OK, right, we're going to throw it out on Xbox and we're going to leave it at full price. Because people are going to look at PlayStation and go, well, why have they got 50% off? I'm not buying No Man's Sky for 40 quid. Why am I paying 40 quid? But PlayStation players get it for 20. You know, it, it, you've got to see it from their perspective, people. You know, I, I know that so far I'm, I'm like, well, this hasn't really happened. This hasn't happened. But from a business sort of standpoint, Hello Games is a very good company. And I don't want to sell short the work and the efforts that they've done. And also, we all know that they're working on Light No Fire. And Light No Fire has split the team in half. So you've got half on No Man's Sky. You've got half over on Light No Fire. Now that they've put out that trailer, you know, they've taken out this the stop blocks. The race has started to get that one across the freaking line, mate. So, you know, there's probably more hands on deck on Light No Fire now. And, yeah, I, maybe this is a sign of the times for No Man's Sky. Maybe they have got this larger update. Maybe they have broken it down into more pieces to put across the year to keep people coming in and so they can do these sales, which generates revenue, which means that they can grow their team, which means that Light No Fire has got another chance of coming out a little bit sooner than what we like to hope. Okay, so it's all swings and roundabouts. You've got to take the rough with the smooth. That's all I'm saying, people. I guess uh, I'm trying to understand it from every person's perspective. If I was an Xbox player, I'd be pretty cheesed off. But I wouldn't be cheesed off with Hello Games. I'd be cheesed off with the actual platform. You know, where you actually buy this stuff. You probably find that they don't want to put it on sale right now. Because people will jump over here after seeing that it's on sale on PC. And seeing that it's on sale on, on you know PlayStation. Wanting to buy it and say, oh... Well, you know what, sod it, I'll just go for Game Pass. It's all about the Game Pass, all about the Game Pass. With, with Microsoft, it's all about that Game Pass. So if they can delay a sale, I'll be more inclined to go, well, I'm not paying 40 quid, I'll just get it on Game Pass and I'll get loads of other games. I'll buy Game Pass. That's what it's about. And as much as people love Game Pass, I feel that Game Pass is like gaming rot i honestly do um but that's my own personal opinion i mean it, it sound off in the comments if you feel i'm wrong on that i just feel that it's it's too much of a distraction and it, it causes this conflict and i think it's purposely done by microsoft and the grubby little mitts but then they've got their business hat on you have to put yourself in their seat a business hat they're even talking about maybe not even making future xboxes and going with the game pass and having some sort of stadia cloud version and you just plug a controller into your freaking tv or something so they've got their own agenda see you have to put business hat on it's so difficult people it really is it really is okay anyways jumping over to my community tab so I did actually just put out a, a post this morning just to sort of say, look, you know, I did say this is where I'm setting my expectations that it could just be exactly what we've seen in Experimental. But where my biggest disappointment is, is Sean of the Murrays at the Game Awards put out a trailer of a ship, the ship that we're now getting in Omega, taken off inside of a brand new interior of a space station, flying out and you see the exterior of the space station and it's freaking all customised, it looks freaking great and as it pulls further forwards you see one of those sort of life rafts there that sort of hints at the Void Mother and maybe the conclusion of the four part arc. I thought when that got delivered we was going to see at the very least the new stations. I thought what we saw at the Game Awards is what we was going to see in February. And that's where I sort of set my expectations. Do, do you feel that I set my expectations wrongly? That was a trailer. Now, although he said that the year is going to be a big year in 2024, it just means at some point in 2024, we're going to get those space stations. Now, the reason I don't think we got those space stations is I did a video on ship racing. And at the back of the stations, you can see some crossed over flags. 
there you go, on the actual um, inside of the interior of the space station. So if you want to see that video, go hit that one up if you've missed that little snippet. But yeah, I honestly think there's a lot tied into these new space stations. I don't think it is just a snazzy new interior that's custom. I think there might be a few more game mechanics that still need finite ch you know, changes done to them and more work done to them. If they are to bring in ship racing, it could be that they've only got the foundations in right now, you know? So maybe there's a lot that hinges around these new space stations. Maybe that station override is going to do something wonderful. Maybe these new stations only make sense to them being there and being realized into the iteration and into the verse once we understand more about the Void Mother. So it could be that they're a key part of this year and this whole narrative and it might not be that Omega is the closing part of the ARG it might be that they've decided to further that narrative we can only wait and see if Sean of the Murrays put something out on Twitter or put something out inside the patch notes that gives us some sort of rhyme or reason as to why those space stations have been held back for so long we found them in the game files the other year somebody actually put them in bomber boy again uh, and yeah inside of a, a Nexus mod and I've actually done a video showing, showcasing all of those sort of new space stations. If you want to see those space stations, because they're freaking glorious, again, I'll put another video up there. You can go and hit that one up. But anyway, the Nintendo Switch is now on sale, and you can see here it's on sale until the 25th of February. And I think that gives us a key indication of how long the expedition might be running for. I think it's going to be running throughout the whole of February, and maybe maybe into the, the first part of, of March. But we'll see how long they give us to run this expedition. It was quite a long one. And that's another thing. If they have done a lift and shift of what we saw in the experimental, and it's not a version, like Hello Games said it was a version, then I kind of feel that content creators, myself included, haven't only spoiled things for those that were watching, but also spoiled things for ourselves. Because, you know, it was only like last week that I run it on Experimental. And if it's exactly the same when it comes out into full-blown iteration, it's, it's going to be less exciting running it a second time. Let's face it, the only decent thing that came out of it is they were some game holdups like proper mission hanging quests that were broken to fudge when we tested it in experimental if there's no bugs then i feel that it was maybe worth it a few spoilers opposed to game hanging game crashing bugs and progress blocking bugs is probably worth the trade-off in my opinion there's other people that are going to have different opinions to that but i feel a few spoilers in favor of a seamless playthrough is probably a decent trade-off but you know sound up in the comments let us know what you think about that one okay cool the sales are on pc and steam and psn i mentioned that earlier and i've done loads of other polls here this is one of the examples of the emissions so if i click that it's going to make it a little bit larger on the old screen and yeah that's an example of the mission it looks very much like the missions that you get at the echo camps from the autophages now apparently you trigger these inside of like um settlements on planets so like the minor settlement or an observatory you just talk to random NPCs and eventually you're going to come across one. It's not every NPC in every single structure. It is random chance. And to be honest, these missions, the only bit that I feel is going to be slightly randomized or procedural is the text down here. A little bit like the procedural text that we get when we send out frigate missions and you get all that sort of flavor text that no one reads. They just hammer through to see what rewards they've got. It, a little bit like that. A little bit like what we see at the Echo Camps as well, because they give a little bit of flavour text too. But the actual missions themselves, I'm fairly sure that the, the objective is going to be fairly similar to what we've seen. Defend against raiding pirates, kill some sentinels, fetch me this, fetch me that. That sort of stuff is what I think is probably going to be inside of these missions. I don't think we're going to get form a fire team and go and destroy this freighter because it's a git or something like that there's not going to be any multiplayer ones there i wouldn't have fought or any of that sort of shenanigans or anything like that going on i don't think they're going to be fully sort of versed in that way heck no oh mr common no there we go so there we are yep there you go pharaoh of euclid says i keep seeing this picture online but has anyone worked out how to actually trigger these interactions um, I have seen people flying around, going to all these different settlements, and none of them were successful in their hunt for one of these procedural missions. So, you know, I really don't know. Um, until the patch notes come out, I really don't know, Pharaoh. 
No, so hopefully we get the patch notes later today. I'll cover those off and let you guys know how they're actually triggered. Okie dokie, next tab. So this is me checking to see whether there's anything coming out. I don't think these are going to come out until the expedition actually goes live. So I'm going to be checking this at about 1 p.m., 2 p.m. on the hour every hour today to see if these update. And as soon as they do, I'm actually more inclined to jump over and cover the patch notes first before I jump in and do the expedition. Because hand on heart, I honestly think that the expedition is going to be a lift and shift from what we saw in the experimental straight over into live iteration. I don't think there's going to be really too much difference there because all the badges are probably going to go unchecked and unchanged and all the rewards i can't see them changing those i think they're going to be set in stone i'm hoping there's going to be some surprises in maybe the optional milestones they have got the opportunity to at least do that fingers crossed they also add in some more lore around the actual four-part arc maybe inside of experimental we didn't see the closing elements of that four-part arc I'm hoping they've got the opportunity to do so inside of the expedition. If there are any changes, that's kind of where I'm setting my expectations that they're not going to make any changes. But if they do, it's a bonus. Okay. Gullio, jumping over to the old Sean Murray watch. He's been extremely silent considering this has just rolled out on play, um, PC and PlayStation. He hasn't said anything about Xbox. Switch has happened, but I don't think Switch has got the actual update as yet. Let me know if you're on Switch and you've got the update. But yeah, he has tweeted this out today, just 20 hours ago. And yeah, it looks like Gex customising a holo. I mean, it's got a lovely freaking decal on it, hasn't it? And I did mention about, you know, showing you decals on ships, which I'm going to jump over into game now and show you a few things. Okay, so I'll be right back. Okay, chums, as you can see, I'm over inside of game. This is on PC. This is my experimental save. Now, it has actually converted to a normal save. And as you can see here, I did keep all of my progress. I know some of you are quite worried that I would lose my progress, but no, you don't. It's fine. So anyway, let's um, take a quick look see at the decals on this ship. Now, there's this decal right here that I find most curious. It's a little geck with a racing flag, and he's wearing himself a little racing helmet, I guess. Pretty darn freaking nice, isn't it? Well, this isn't the first time that we've seen decals such as this. Whenever we see decals like this, it's usually associated to a function. What do I mean by that? Well, there's another one inside of the Nexus, actually, that I'm going to show you real quickly. It's not got a Gek, it's got a Vic it's got a Corvax, but it's similar. I guess I'll show you in a second, people. Let me just run on over to where I need to be. Okay, jump. So over by good old Kronos over here, you can see there's a Gek sort of one on that rotating sort of doohickey. Here you go. If I can go into camera mode at the right time, boom. There we go. There's the little Gek there with a chef hat on. Now he does the functions of cooking. You can turn in all your cookery products to him right here at Kronos's sort of stand. But not only is there a decal here, there, there is another one over here on the actual floor which is a Corvax with a DNA strand in his hand. Again, that's because this has the function of changing DNA. So wherever you see these sort of strange decals, it means that it's associated to a function. There's also another one on the bite beat, and it's got like a little gag, but this time he's got like some headphones on and a musical note. Trust me, it's on there. In fact, I'll fire up my PlayStation just to show you that there's one on the bite beat. I haven't got bite beats on this save, no. Okay, chums, I'm over on PlayStation. I'm just going to jump into the old camera mode and go out here where I've got a bite beat just sitting out here on the mezzanine just for this one reason. That's the decal there. You can see it right there. So it's a little geck with some headphones on and a musical note. Now this thing serves the purpose of playing music. Hence the actual decal for a function. Also, on the side of the actual neutron processors is also a little chef decal. You can probably see it there. Let's stick the sun up in the sky over this way. Um, and there's a storm raging, so I might not be able to see it. There you go. Look, the same one that was over by Kronos' stand. And again, the neutron process has the function of doing cooking. So when we see the little racing geck on the side of the actual new runner ship, I'm fairly sure that we're going to see some sort of function assigned to that ship where it comes to racing or ship racing or something. I mean, right now, it just does exactly what other ships do. So I'm really not 100% sure. Even some of these posters have got like that little geck on them. 
Yeah. So, you know, there we go, people. That's my theory. I still think ship racing or racing is on the cards for later this year, people. Yeah, I need to get my runner ship on this save on my old PlayStation D5. But I don't think, as of yet, we can actually run the actual mission, people. Ah, uh, I'll just show you my freighter. I mentioned it earlier, didn't I? There you go. That's my freighter. Oh, great. <laughs> you can see it in green a second ago, couldn't you? Yeah, there you go. I'll show you in here. So that's my freighter. It's already S-Class. And it's got a lovely giant turny wheel at the end of it. I really like my freighter. And I've called it the Red Dwarf. I'm rather partial to it. I don't think on my PlayStation 4 save that I'm going to be swapping that freighter out, people. I'm just going to fly up to the old Nexus. And I'm going to check to see if we can run the expedition yet. I don't think we're going to be able to run it until about 2pm here in UK time, as I mentioned earlier, people inside the viewers. But it doesn't hurt to check, does it? So I'll just call in the old Nexus and I'll see you in there, people. Something rather curious, people. If we can't run it right now, I'm still seeing some of these runner ships appearing inside a game. But then, of course I would, because you can still see PC players inside of here, can't you? So, yeah. Okay, cool, yeah. Nah, just ignore you. I'm just being silly. Right, let's head on over to here, then. And let's go and hit on up this terminal and see if the expedition is there to be had. Boom. Are you going to surprise me, game? No. I think it's going to be at least 2pm today here in the UK. And 9am over in Eastern Standard Time. You're going to have to look up your own time zones to know when it roughly it might start for you. I mean, that time is subject to change. It's what's been found inside of the, the files for the game currently. But we know that Hello Games can tweak that their side. Now, the only reason I can think that they might tweak it their side if the, the sales for Xbox still haven't taken place and if the update for Xbox still hasn't taken place. I really wish they would fix the shaky Nexus. I mean, look at it. It's been like this for freaking time, and it still shakes. It's a pain in the neck. The only real way to get rid of that, I think you can do like like a, one of these stable emojis, and sometimes it sorts it out. Nope. Okay, camera mode. There you go. That sorts it out. And that's about the only way to make it stable. Freaking weird, huh? Anyway, people, that's pretty much everything I've got for you on the table for this. I was going to say something else. Hmm, it'll come to me. One sec. Ah, yeah, I remember what else I was going to say. So a lot of people out there inside of the viewerverse said, Captain Steve, maybe you should stop overhyping or doing the speculation videos that you do around these sort of updates. Well, it's one of the things that I enjoy doing the most. And even if some of the things that I speculate on or hype up don't come in into one update, at least if Hello Games see that it's something that people are interested in or would like to see put into the iteration, it's food for thought. It goes on their table of things, shall we add it? If I didn't do speculation videos or idea videos, Hello Games say that they're always watching and always listening to the community. If I took away that avenue for them to listen to or to look at, it's, it's another avenue where it gets closed down. We might not see some of the things come into iteration. It's like I did do an ideas video ages ago. I'd done a mock-up and I said it would be nice if we had Sentinel Strongholds, a place that we could raid and shut down Sentinel activity on a planet to help us with exploration without being bothered by the little rascals. We ended up with Sentinel Pillars, people. They entered, Sentinel Pillars appeared inside a game. And brilliant, fantastic. The only thing is with that, <laughs> It's the way that you find the Sentinel Pillar is to destroy a load of Sentinels, which is the thing that I don't want to do. I've done it a hundred times. I don't want to have to tackle with a load of Sentinels to find a Sentinel Pillar. It'd be nice if there was an easy way to find a Sentinel Pillar to shut down that activity. Now, if you've got a Sentinel ship, yeah, or you've got a Sentinel multi-tool, which you get from the Echo Camps, I think either of those two devices should be able to locate you a Sentinel Pillar. It's like if you've got the Sentinel multi-tool, when you bring up the sweep scanner, it'd be nice if you could actually, you know, press left and right, like you find electromagnetic hotspots or whatever, but you keep going, it comes up Sentinel pillar, and you lock onto the nearest Sentinel pillar using your multi-tool. Or in your Sentinelized ship, if you've got the economy scanner in, and you scan when you're in the planet, it finds you a trading post. Well, what if, if you used the conflict scanner, it found you the freaking Sentinel pillar? So you could go straight there in your Sentinel ship and shut down the Sentinel activity, making it worthwhile having the Sentinel ship and having a Sentinel multi-tool, and they've got new functions tied into locating Sentinels. 
Is it just me, or is this sort of stuff common sense? Oh, I, I would love to be invited along to the Hello Games studio, just to sit there for a day and go over things and say, right, let's bottom this out. Let's add a bit more depth. Let's add a little bit more function. Let's gamify this. Let's remove the random numbers game from this and make it more skill orientated or perk orientated. I own a multi-tool. I own a Sentinel ship. Let's give them rhyme and reason. You know, that sort of stuff. It, it, just add in depth to every single little thing. Don't get me started on the living ship. Heck no. I mean, yeah, you've only got the, the equivalent of photon cannons. You haven't, you haven't got nothing. You've got no alien weapons for an alien ship. Come on! You know? Oh my days. Dang it. Uh, I need to do a video just on bottoming out and adding depth to elements and send it over to Hello Games or something. Oh, just invite me, Hello Games. I will give up. I will take a week off frickin' work to come and sit in your studio every day as long as you give me tea. As long as you give me tea and somewhere to park my car, I will be there. Yeah, you don't even have to pay me. No, no, I'll sort my own lunch out even. Just give me tea. Tea, that's my fuel, okay? And I'll be there and I'll help you with bottoming out all these things and help delivering stuff for the year. If you see this video, it's an open invitation. Yeah, so you can just hit me up, DM on me on Twitter or whatever and say, okay, Steve, you're right, fine. You can come down for a week. We'll get you to sign an NDA. I'll do that. I freaking would. I really would. I'd love to. Yeah, I just want to see the game reach as much potential as possible and understand, maybe, if there are hang-ups as to why it can't be done. Even if I came down and you explained to me, well, you can't do that, we can't because of this or that or whatever. At least I can make a video for the community and say, well, this is why this stuff isn't happening. The super formula that you wanted? Yeah, the reason for that is X, Y, Z. Yeah, you know. <laughs> people, there you go. I'm, I'm fairly sure there's other content creators that would love to do that too. Heck, even if you coincided it to when the meetup is, maybe you could get like a little mini team of us up in your boardroom or something. Just let us know in advance, and I, I, I put together a little team. Yeah, heck yes. There's some content creators that have been at this for freaking years. They would love to be involved too, I'd imagine. Anyways, yeah, there we are. That's that's pretty much everything I've got for you people. So I don't think speculation and hype damages anything. Yes, it might upset people's expectations, but it depends on where you set your expectations. Always set them at base. And if anything comes in on top of that, it's a bonus. So a lot of these ideas and what you hear going around on Reddit posts or in videos or even my videos, try to think well that's sensible that's sensible that's freaking cloud nine that might not ever happen but if it does it'd be freaking great but i'm not setting that as expectation like ship customization you know what i mean it would be great it would be lovely we've seen it done in other games we've now got customizable staffs things are coming steps are happening in the right direction towards that sort of thing it might happen but don't set it as expectation that's going to happen in the next update it could be this year it might even be next year something like that but i'd imagine it's somewhere on their radar because enough people have talked about it with inside the community if people in the community didn't talk about ship customization it wouldn't any be anywhere near their radar right now but jason's done a video on it i've done a video on it beeble's done a video on it scottish rod's done a video on it professor cynical that pretty much every content creator has done a video around ship customization and the pros and cons and whether it could damage ship hunting which I know Ricey's done one on it. So, yeah, it's how they put it in and make the community happy. And another thing that I would say is every single content creator that has their niche has got that sort of double-edged sword. It's like me with a speculation. Yes, it might set up false expectations, etc., like that. Say, like, base building. Beeble is awesome at base building. But he uses glitch methods and not everybody can use glitch methods i'm sure he upsets a few people inside of the base building community you know because of the techniques he uses some other base builders might use blender and use blender to actually make builds and that might upset people there's always going to be people that aren't happy with certain things i always in my descriptions of my titles i say speculation if you see that inside of my title and you don't like my speculation videos just don't watch the ones that have got speculation inside of the actual uh, title of it. Those that do can enjoy it. And those that don't want speculation or ideas, I always put either speculation or ideas in the title. It's clear what it is. And sometimes I even put it on the thumbnail now to make it extra clear that it's speculation. Um, but yeah, let's take, for example, say law. You know, 
I used to do a lot of lore videos. I still do a lot of lore videos, but it's my interpretation. Ghost, Ghostlight. If you haven't hit up Ghostlight, he does amazing lore videos. I love watching his lore videos because his date, his, his take differs to mine, but I don't hate him for having a different opinion. I love it in fact, because I'm like, oh, I didn't look at it that way. And I might reshape the way that I think of things based on what he's he's put out there. And I'm fairly sure he looks at some of my takes and goes, actually, Captain Steve's got a point. And I like the fact that we bounce off of each other on like that. I'm the same with Professor Cynical. Professor Cynical loves to speculate. And yeah, we, we knock off each other, we, you know. It, uh, yeah, it, it, it's just nice to have that sort of discord, that sort of area of debate. And if you close down some of that, you, you're limiting yourself. I don't understand why people get so worked up over not having the same opinion or the same sort of level of discord. It, it promotes growth, in my opinion. But yeah, it is difficult for content creators. That's the point I'm trying to put across right now, is it's difficult for content creators to know the balance on what's going to be right for the community, what's not going to be right for the community. It's like thumbnails around all this expedition type stuff that we just had in Experimental Branch. I've seen some content creators put out images that's clearly got the new sort of helmet on there or the new wingsuit or the staff even. Now, I didn't put that in my thumbnails, you know, but it was all over Twitter. It was all over Reddit. There was no escaping from it. You know, if you go on any social area, you're going to see it. And, um, you know, it, it just... Being a content creator, you've got to drive the clicks. You've got to make a thumbnail that appeals to people to click on. And I know that it pops up in your feed and you can't help what pops up in your feed. It's fed to you by Google's algorithm and YouTube's algorithm. So you might see that thumbnail and say, oh, bloody hell, now I know what the helmet looks like. Oh, no, now I know what the staff looks like. I mean, the actual runner, the ship runner, whatever, that was in the Hello Games trailer at the Games Awards. So, you know, a fair play to anybody that put that in there. I mean, that's all fair game, in my opinion. It was out there inside of the wider community space that that runner ship was coming. So that's that that's that's neither here nor there but yeah it's it's one of those and i know that some people got upset with seeing that in thumbnails yeah uh, i don't think it would have bothered me even if i didn't have access to the actual content i'd be like oh that's a cool helmet click on that how do i get it so i knew in advance exactly what steps i've got to do to get that helmet i would have been fine and dandy with it but i know some other people are really disgruntled by it i've had people sound up in my comments saying yeah i've just unsubscribed from so and so because of them spoiling it for me git bags you know that sort of stuff and you know, I can't talk for everyone. I know that I've put stuff inside my thumbnails in the past. Like when those new space stations were accidentally left in the game files, I put that on my thumbnail. I even had another content creator tear chunks out of me saying, how dare you do this and spoil it for the community. And then that same content creator has actually put the helmet and the staff in their thumbnail this time around. I'm like, oh, <laughs> pot kettle. Yeah, but yeah, yeah fun times. Yeah, but... I still see that as healthy debate. It just made me chuckle to myself a little bit, you know. I think it the, because I had the news first, maybe I rubbed them up the wrong way because they hadn't seen it and I got loads of views. I don't know. But at the same time, I very rarely look at other people's views and subscriber counts and all that sort of stuff. I just go by, is my channel growing the way I want it to grow? I very rarely look at other people's stats and think, oh, they're getting loads of growth and I'm not. I just carry on doing what I enjoy. And if my numbers go up, they go up. If they don't, they don't. I, I just do what I enjoy. Hence why I'm doing Power World. I know that the numbers are low, but I love playing it. So it's going to have a place on my channel still. I'm still playing Power World. I still want to build that, beat that shadow beak. The end of boss people is causing me troubles. He really is. Anyways, now I have completely exhausted what I need to say about No Man's Sky. This is my lunch break and I know that the patch notes are coming. So uh, yeah, I need to set aside some time to go over those patch notes. Anyway, salute to Mondo people in the view of us. Thank you for watching. I know this was a little bit ranty at times, but hopefully it gives you a bit of an insight about content creators and the way that we have to juggle things sometimes. You walk a little bit of a tightrope. There's never any, you're always going to upset somebody with something that you put out there inside of the verse. It's not easy being a content creator on that regard. It is a freaking dream job if you can do this full time. Don't get me wrong, it's pretty darn kushty. But I just mentioned, I'm on my lunch break. I actually have a day job. There's no way that YouTube can actually pay 
a daily wage, well, a, a monthly wage for me. It's just not there, and it's probably not going to be there for some time. But every little helps. So if you can hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, so I know that you're engaged, I know that you want more, and I'll carry on pumping out more of the same. Until next time, people, salute Mondo. Goodbye, goodbye. And goodbye again.